Hi, I'm Lewis Adelman, and today I'm going to be reading the second half of chapter three of my novel, The Anti-Vampire Tale. So close, his tight gray shirt drapes over his rippling shoulders and chest like a sheet of water rolling over a cliff. He starts leaning down. His blue eyes feel like they're entering my green ones. Teal sounds like a delicious mix, his precious lips getting closer to mine. What is happening to me? My God, I don't even know his name. I don't think I'll pull away. An elbow pokes at his left arm. He turns sideways, instantly bringing his dancing body upright, snarling and fist clench. Excitement faces buzzkill. Hey buddy, she's with me, grumbles Lyle with a tremble in his speech. Gray's voice slides out of his throat. She didn't say anything, friend. His tone is powerful but smooth with a hint of rasp. If it were a color, it'd match his shirt. I'm saying it for her. She's with me. Words shoot out of my mouth. No, I am not. Gray looks at me and smiles. Lyle says, Hey, big man, this conversation is between you and me, not the girl. Still locked in on me, Gray pays him no mind. Neither do I. Lyle taps Gray's shoulder roughly. Looking back to Lyle, anger flaring in his face for a moment, Gray's teeth flash before he pushes the emotion away. Hey friend, no reason to get ugly in here tonight. Lots of girls in here. This one's got a right to dance with whoever she wants, but so can all the others. Maybe you'll find someone else you like. Dropping one of the drinks from his hands, energy drinks spilling and spreading, cut bouncing on the floor. Lyle says, Maybe I should just beat the hell out of you. Grace says, Say that you could beat the hell out of me. Then the night would end with both of us in a jail cell together. Ambrosia pulls one of her new friends by the wrist, a blonde with a single ponytail, plenty of curve, and little of it covered by her low-cut exercise t-shirt and stretch pants with giant pink leg warmers. They dance around Lyle. When he continues to stare at Gray, Ambrosia's friend bends over very far and dances in that position right next to Buzzkill. Lyle's eyes drop down and take in the shape of her butt. A smile sneaks over him. Gray continues speaking to Lyle, his voice sending a tingle through me. Wouldn't you rather end up with someone prettier than me, someplace better than a jail cell? God knows I do. Lyle looks at me, then at the strange girl's butt. Back to me, strange butt. Then to Gray and says, Look, I already told you. Ambrosia grabs Lyle's hand and places it on the strange girl's waist. Now standing, the girl moves in close and slides her arms around his neck. She pushes her body to him, rubbing against him, slowly leading him away from us. Lyle doesn't look back. Ambrosia bows at us and then resumes bouncing her body to the music. Gray moves closer to me. We start dancing again, still in sync. Sar, the first words out my mouth to him are interrupted. Another man taps Gray's shoulder. He's almost the same size as Gray, and he has a pointed nose and long blonde hair pulled back in a ponytail. Gray doesn't look pleased, but shakes the man's extended hand. Ambrosia blindsides me with a girl huddle and whispers urgently, Bathroom break. Is the whole world conspiring to keep Gray away from me? I start to shake my head no. Now, she demands. Before I can respond, she pulls me away. Gray stares at his friend who is talking to him. I don't think Gray likes him very much. My head turns away from them to watch where Ambrosia is dragging me. Everything is gloomy and mean and coated in despair. It's not because anything I see is really that bleak, but it's because it's all a part of pulling me away from him. How odd that everything pales in comparison to a guy with such pale skin. Nothing registers but a longing to be back on the dance floor with Gray until she pulls me into the bathroom, spinning around to face me once we're inside. Ruby, that guy is a psycho. Suddenly feeling offended and hostile, how dare she say this about my wonderful Gray? I ask, What are you talking about? You haven't even talked to him. We hooked up a few weeks ago here. He's crazy. My heart sinks and I feel my smile float away to the land of sadness. 
Oh no, Ambrosia laughs, not your guy, Gray Shirt. I'm talking about his friend with the blonde ponytail. His name's Roderick. Complete psychopath. We gotta leave. My heart jumps at her last word. Ambrosia, you say that about every guy you date after you break up. They're all psychos or freaks. You wind up dating half of them again, and sometimes again and again and again. Shaking her head and not smiling at my little joke, Look what he did to my neck, she says, pulling her collar to the side. At the base of her neck are two fiery dots. Psycho bit into me like I was freaking Buffy or something. Oh my god. Yeah, and that was weeks ago. The marks are still there. Let's sneak right out the front door. Now. What about your tab? I'll get my card from them tomorrow. I've forgotten to close out a few times before. No big deal. They all know me here. But the guy... Told you he's psycho. No. Oh, gray shirt. Yes. You don't want to leave? I shake my head. Ruby, I don't like this. I've never heard her say that about anything but studying. Ambrosia, I really like this guy. Really? Completely. She rolls her lips tightly inside her mouth, thinking, Okay, you go get your man, Sheikah, but don't get so focused on Gray that you forget to look out for your crazy blue friend, too. This Roderick guy's sketchy. You got it, girl. We walk toward the door. I ask, Hey, how did you get that blonde girl to go for Lyle? Well, I told her that he's a trust fund kid, and... And what? Let's just say we owe her free drinks for, well forever. The walk back to the dance floor is nothing but a meaningless maze of people and objects. The only person to make me feel like my skin pulses with electricity is on the dance floor, and anything between here and there is a cruel torture that could never measure up to the gray one whose name I don't even know. My god, I'm losing my mind, and I'm loving it. I don't see that Roderick guy, but I don't see gray either. Hope they haven't already left. My feelings hurt just at the thought of it. I don't even know him, just know how I feel about him. Those arms, those eyes, so different from me. Lyle's head is buried in the blonde's neck. I see the same sights on the dance floor. Ambrosia starts to dance. My knees move with the beat, but with little energy and no enthusiasm. The song ends and Right Round starts playing. It's hard to imagine feeling dead on the dance floor with this song on, but I don't feel very alive right now. Definitely nothing like how I felt dancing with him. A 2B.